Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the Scrap and Roll podcast. It is a brand new year, 2023. We've been gone for at least the last three, maybe four weeks, but we are back. And as you can see, we got a full group going on. Go ahead and introduce yourselves. What's up? It's Damien. You already know who it is. (laughs) I mean, sometimes people call me Jace. But for the purposes of this show and the purpose of my undefeated, undisputed record, I'm going to just go with the King of Kings, the Go to Goats. John Jones? <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and go, CJ. I guess I got to follow that. Uh, it's MMA Casual 619, Town Business, the new TikTok. Go follow that shit. Posting all kind of old shit. New shit or the hot shit. Follow your boy. Hey. Yeah, definitely check out TikTok. I feel like since the last time we've been on here, like my TikTok has completely blown up. I only had like 200 followers starting in December. And like now the Scrap and Roll MMA uh, TikTok is at 7,600 as of the recording of this video. So yeah, you know, it's it's growing. Having a good time yeah. over there. Um It's been a while since we've been here. A lot of events have taken place. I think um, the last time we were really on here, we were talking about the uh, Adesanya fight. It might have been all the way back to Adesanya. Um, But no, 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 no. Actually, it was the Thompson versus Holland fight. So me, Jace, and Damien, we were on that call uh, going over the Thompson versus Holland (laughs) fight. We know what happened there. It is what it is. Uh, overall, how was the year of 2022 for you guys, like as far as uh, MMA, but like more so specifically the UFC? For me, it was a great year. I loved it. I felt like we were very entertained this year, especially like coming off of the long period of like not having any events. And then when it came back, you know, all the events were like super quiet, no audiences and stuff, you know. So now to have everything full blown back in action, like it feels it feels like we got spoiled this year. I'm not going to cap. For sure. Um, I would definitely say that it's like one of the best years in the UFC. As far as since I've been watching since 2017, it's uh, been my favorite year. Um, what about you, CJ? Uh, it was a good year for me, man. Like, I don't get, I'm here watching all the fights. I think it was real good for me and my fans because we got to go to a fight, our first UFC fight. So uh, that was amazing. But actually kind of sad too a lot of my people lost this year so you know you gotta take the good with the bad yo let's talk about it because 2022 was just it was a brutal year like for reigning champions (laughs) like it it was just terrible um i just did a i just wrote like a little script on trevor whitman you know he lost all his champions and then justin gaethje lost at 274 so like it's been a tough year for a lot of good Fighters, a lot of good coaches. Uh, what about you, a lot of good teams, Jace? Yeah, yeah. So for me, I think that this year was just epic, um, beyond some of the most brutal knockouts we've ever seen. Hashtag Adesanya. Shout out to Tony Ferguson. Um, just seeing oh, some no. fucking wars. <laughs> I mean, just keeping it one hundred. We seen some wars. And I mean, I think the one that really comes to my mind is Glover and Jerry. Like when you just think about a great brawl back and forth. Both guys were right there, just a, 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 an inch of winning and a five round brutal war, man. Like what more can you ask for? Christmas came early for us. Yeah. And the crazy thing about that card is that was the free card. Remember like nobody wanted to watch it and it was like whatever obligation they had. So they made that pay-per-view completely free. And that was like one of the best paper cards. I mean, pay-per-views of the year. Um, and yeah, we did get that fight. We got the fight with Valentina. You know, y'all know how CJ feels about Valentina. Can't say mm-hmm. nothing wrong. Can't say I mean, you're going to have to go on there and talk about it by yourself. Because I literally just rewatched that fight. But we can't we can sit there and go on it. <laughs> oh, man. You are so serious about that. She but really did. He's talking Come about... On. Uh, talking about uh, the craziest fights, like back and forth fights. I rewatched the um, the cum shot fight with Gil- with Gilbert Durino. 
bruh, that fight right there was nuts. Back and forth, the whole fight. You didn't know what was going to happen. Listen, I'm sick of you and Jace calling Hamza Chamayev cum shot, okay? <laughs> I, I, I did that for him. I did that for him. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sick. Because I know he was going to correct me. <laughs> I know he was going to say, come correct. Come correct. <laughs> come correct. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Yeah. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's too much. It's too much. Like, we just got started. It's a new year. Like, give, let the man have his name, you know, because when he runs through Kobe Covington, then what? I'm telling y'all. Y'all gonna be hurt. Mm. That man's too small for him. Mm. The man just, you can make that That's face all you fair. want. But I, I do. I think that Hamza runs through Kobe. I think that would be actually a good matchup. I think they'll be I think they'll be pretty even. Yeah. Well, the uh champ would like to speak. The uh only undefeated person on this podcast and his predictions would like to speak. And uh I'm gonna say y'all need to put some respect on Kobe's name. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the same man that don't put no respect on anybody else's name. I'm just saying, I think Kobe runs through a cum shot. Damn. Yeah. Okay. I don't know about that. He's definitely a nut hugger. That's for sure. Um, and then, you know, just looking into UFC 282, Jan Blahovich versus Ankalaev, you know, you had highway robbery by your boy, Patty the Batty. Um mm. You got to see Clearly. Raul Rosas Jr. Yeah, that was ridiculous. You got to see Raul <laughs> Rosas Jr. go out there and do his thing, make his debut at 18 years old. Um, that's really embarrassed I, that dude. He embarrassed he really that did. dude. That dude. That dude looked embarrassed afterwards. Like I can't believe this shit. Yeah, uh, man, you should have heard what he uh, said in the ring after he lost. It was super depressing. I, I seen it on that? TikTok. He was like, "I'm just not good enough." I just got um, beat by a kid. I can't make it. I'm 0-3 in the UFC. I can't make it. I'm not good enough. I'm like, damn, that's super sad, bro. You can't cut the cheese, but fuck, bro. Don't doubt yourself like that, man. Nah, yeah. especially not in front of the cameras and shit. <laughs> an but, I mean, alternatively, would you rather have someone keeping it 1,000 or someone all gas, you know, a fucking all cat. We think of Patty talking about how his fight should have got fight fight of the night. I mean, which one do you want? <laughs> nah, but that is different though. This guy, he needs confidence. He needs that for his opponents because now they're seeing that he's a withered man. Like psh, now he's easy. Now he's prey. Coming coming he like should. that. Well, the UFC obviously thought he was praying because they put him in there, the 18-year-old child who put them hands on him. Bruh. Embarrass you know, and that I, guy. I said going into it, um, he was 0-2 in the UFC. He had lost his contender series fight, and he was 0-2 in Bellator. Um, and I think his record was 10-6 and going into the fight. So they really did pick an opponent that would kind of you know he fit the he fit the the, the blueprint right like it was somebody yeah. that like has experience exactly but but even in his last fight before that which um was against Arichi Lang that was a banger like it, it really was a good fight I think um but unfortunately it didn't work out for him Patty looked you know what do you, okay let's let's go ahead and just jump right into it what do y'all think gonna happen to Darren Till Blew his load. <laughs> that man blew his load. Yo, I, I was talking um, on TikTok and CJ was on there as well. And I suggested that Darren Till looks into going to the PFL. Honestly, I think that he needs a fresh new coat of paint. He needs to go and fight some other contenders, take a little bit of stress off himself. Not to say that the PFL is easy because the format that they have over there, you know, having to fight four fights within basically seven months, uh, that tournament style is rough, especially for somebody like him who has kind of been like e injury prone over the last couple of weeks. I mean, over the last couple of years, but at the same time, he'll make more money because he has a name for himself. He built himself up here in the UFC. Um, so he'll make more money. He has opportunity for the million dollars and he can go over there, potentially win and then come back with a little bit more confidence. 
I just I don't see Darren Till beat nobody in the top fifteen. Do y'all? He yeah, looked like his own was gone. Like, yeah, he didn't look good in that last fight. Nah, he's not the same. I mean, he looked okay on the hand. He had, he had good hands. moments. Yeah, yeah, he had good movement and things, but he just got grappled up and it, it was. He got punched like 200 times in the first round. <laughs> yeah. that, that man was taking the damage. That should be his new nickname, The Damage. <laughs> Instead Elkins, of you're gonna Darren, have to, Elkins. <laughs> you're going to have to roll that. You're going to have to roll up on that nickname. I've never <laughs> been a fan of anyway, so he can go wherever. I don't care. Dang, you didn't uh, like Till? If, if I'm what? keeping it 1,000, I, I think that uh, Till should quit MMA. He should just go mm. back to kickboxing. Because if you can't get fucking Duprissy off of you, like if Duprissy is taking you down at will, first of all, why do you keep hanging out with cum shot? You know, who's Bruh, supposed- that that's exactly what I, my thought was. Like, how you getting wrestled like that when you fucking buddy buddy with one of the best wrestlers in the division? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand it. He was getting taken down too easily. Yeah, almost looked like it was a WWE match. It was wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know what's next for Darren Till, um, aside was, from... I mean, it was entertaining. I enjoyed it. <laughs> you enjoyed him <laughs> getting clinched and punched <laughs> in the face 200 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, and then also on that card, which was a shocker for me... Bryce Mitchell versus Ilya Taporia. Ilya Taporia is looking like the dark horse of the 145 division. Yeah, after that, after that performance for sure. He's man, a dog. man, man. He's a dog. he made Bryce Mitchell look like he didn't even belong in there, which is crazy because we we he didn't did see him grappling and wrestling capabilities. <laughs> that was nuts. He looked. That man right there got destroyed that night. You could see it. You could take a photo of every different moment in that fight and see it as in chronological order. He gets fucking more defeated. <laughs> he pretty much gave up in that fight. What did you guys think about uh, his post fight comment saying that he had the flu? He shouldn't have fought like. Listen, we don't want to hear it. OK, because if you would went in there and tapped him out, you'd have been like, oh, I had the flu or I didn't feel good. Nah, nigga, I don't want to hear none of that bullshit, okay? You got beat the fuck. He walked you like a dog. He damn near beat the skin off you. Like, thank you, Ilya is my dude. I predicted it. I told this guy <laughs> right before the fight that Ilya was about to put it on him, and he did. This man is undefeated with the predictions, huh? <laughs> don't. Okay. Don't throw any okay. more fire on that. Stockton, nah, homie. No, nah, we're going we gonna to elevate his ego, and then the one that he loses, that's going to be a big one. That part. That <laughs> part. Exactly. In the words of uh, your boy Ariel Hawani, when you come for the king, don't miss. <laughs> Speaking of Ariel, Ariel ain't caught no L's. Ariel is not losing. He is just W's yep. after W's after W. Um. I watch the MMA Hour every Monday, every Wednesday. Like, I love it, you know. Um, but, yeah, recently, he ain't been playing. Yeah, he really hasn't. <laughs> I've been seeing a new version of him, and I'm like, okay, like, I kind of fuck with you, Ariel, because he ain't afraid to speak his mind nowadays. Yeah, facts. Yeah, because he's not with ESPN now. He's independent, so there's nobody that yeah. can stand over him and tell him, you know, you can or you cannot say this or what you can't talk about. And that man's having a field day. Um, obviously I can't talk about, you know, yeah. the whole situation that happened there, but, we know. Was but, but everybody know, <laughs> right? Exactly. So moving on after that card, let's talk about our boy, Bobby Green, Bobby, what happened? Hey, I love Bobby Green. Like, Hey, that's probably one of my favorite fighters to watch nowadays, honestly, because that man brings on the show and he got hands that boy quick with it. It's just psh, he sometimes you just get hit with that <laughs> with that one hitter quitter. Who did he oh, fight? Yeah. Uh, Dober. Yeah. Dober. Damn, bro. It was like it was just one <laughs> hook, right? Just one hook yep. took his chin behind his shoulder. <laughs> That's it. It was Scott, done. For. You should have seen my girl. You should have seen Mo. She was like, "Keep your hands up, move. Keep your hands up." 
And she's like, see, they don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Though, what That's his down. style. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he, he throws him punches from the from the he throws them from the hip, so you can't even see him coming. So they're even quicker, see, it seems like. There's no but problem that, with that. When you're yeah, in the middle of the ring, the you can move around. He got knocked yeah. out while he was on the cage. He can't move his yeah. feet. Of course, like yeah. when you get to the cage, put your hands up and then move your feet out the way so that left foot don't come. Hey, Bobby and, was styling, but and, it was all good till it wasn't, like we always say. In the words of one of the greatest poets that has ever graced this lovely earth, Mike Tyson. Mm. Everybody's got a plan to get punched in the motherfucking face. Yo, I love Bobby. I love Bobby. He looked great in that fight. Like, he was piecing Drew Dober great. up. The first round, he had Drew Dober out there looking crazy. Dude. You know, he ended up getting caught. You know, it is what it is. Um, and then right after that, you had Alex Caceres versus Julian Arosa with that beautiful, yeah, beautiful head right. kick. That Say goodbye. Super smooth. Yeah, one thing I'm going to be doing this year is I'm going to be keeping track, like, in an Excel spreadsheet of, like, fight of the night, submissions, yeah. knockouts, shit like yeah, that. So they're like, I'm going to have to. Hey, paper and pen, however you do it, keep track. Because, like, <laughs> when we get to the end of the year, it's like there's so nah. many, like, there's so many different fights that we've watched that like it's hard to decide especially you cj because i know you watch everything cj watched everything he watched cage he's texting me he's like hey cage warriors on and victor is on bellator is on rising is on like he's watching all of it <laughs> the thing with cage warriors, you, it might be like some low budget shit but they be some good ass fights on that thing and it'd be like on youtube at like 10 o'clock in the morning i'm like hey it's free i'm gonna watch this shit i'll be at hey. home so why not a fight is, free a, fight. is a good price Hey, yeah. the, the craziest thing, uh, me and Mo, we was just in here, and I was just going through YouTube. I was like, oh, something's live. It was like some Afghanistan fights. And, and it was bad. And I'm like, hey, I'm going to watch it. Fuck it. It's free. Hey. I like to see motherfuckers getting knocked out early in the morning. Why not? <laughs> All right. So taking a look at the first card of this week, I mean, of this year, it was supposed to be your boy Kevin Gaslam. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Before I even get into that. Did y'all see the pictures of Kevin Gaslam's face? Of course. My like, boy did you see the pictures, CJ? Uh, Listen, I'm not... Oh, you haven't seen it? Okay, wait a minute, because because this is mandatory that you see this. <laughs> Here's the this weird, man, weird this thing about... This man stay looking like that, too. The weird thing is not his tooth. The weird thing is that, that hole in his face. You got That's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to talk about. Like, Kelvin Gastelum consistently why they, have... Why, why they bleep it? that out? Yeah. <laughs> Kelvin uh, Gastelum... Is, even worse. He consistently has staff, um, just nasty stuff going on with his face that's just like, damn, I don't know how to make that bigger on here. Now, do we think it's like has something to do with his like immune system or something or is he just a dirty motherfucker or is that gym that he be at just full of dirty motherfuckers i think the gym's just dirty at this i think point. he's just dirty all right let's quickly talk about it on here Bad. all right so this is kelvin <laughs> gasolum's face this is cj's first time seeing this right this is disgusting absolutely yeah. Disgusting. Like, but this is what I want to know. What is this? And why does he always have some type of wing worm, some type of staph infection? This is right. not the first time that he's had it on his face either. And remember, mm. he had like some weird ringworm or something on his back before. His, like, yeah, like on his back of his neck or something. And they still let him fight with that. Yeah, like what's going on at King's MMA? Because it, it's not, it's not, it's not good. And yeah, that's that not mean normal, I get bro. like taking the <laughs> knee to the face. Okay, we get it. You know, it's unfortunate that it happened, but it happened. But like that on his face, nah, Kelvin. <laughs> like save that picture. Should have just like cropped it out or something. Like I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that that Censored was it. that wasn't it right there. Yeah, should've, that was not it. That shit. I'm not trying to see that. <laughs> exactly. Ugh. So now we have Sean Strickland stepping in. 
Uh, I was listening to Bisping and he said that this is the first time since Tito Ortiz that um, a person has headlined back to back events. So I guess mm, uh, Tito damn. Ortiz headlined UFC 50 and then UFC 51. Um, so your boy, Sean Strickland, stepping in. <sighs> well, yeah, because I feel like that's rare because of the fights are so often. But because we have a little bit of a break, he could actually because he yeah. didn't he get. I mean, he lost his last fight, like split decision, right? Yeah. So yeah, how are you guys feeling about Sean Strickland stepping in? Um, and do you guys know about Nasruddin? I don't know about him. Not uh, Emo Bob. He fought uh, Buckley. Mm-hmm. His last fight, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. He's, He's the a one big that fighter. He uses his leg real well. Well, Buckley's short, so of course he was. Yeah. He's yeah, it was. It I, think was um, see, I think we might see Sean lose three in a row and shit. <laughs> Please and thank you. I what, can't you don't like him? him? No. Why? I don't. This is his mouth? This man be talking shit. This man be fighting people in the gym. <laughs> he be inviting people that that be talking shit to beat him up. I'm like, come on, nigga, you a professional? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't care who he fights. I want him to lose. I don't care. I just he's one of those dudes I can't mess with like that. We're having. And not even lose. Want him to get knocked the fuck out. Mm hmm. Per- Pereira is ass again. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's mostly the gym antics that you hear about and then also just him. Um, just like his, like tomorrow, you know, they're going to have the whole, whatever it's called, you know what I'm talking about, the little media scrum, and he's going to be up there talking crazy about something that's just absolutely insane. And it's just like, Sean, come on. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll see how his ego is now that he got two of those. I think he's still going to walk in being the same. Your boy, Damon Jackson. Um, they need to change his picture. For <laughs> real. That's dirty. <laughs> like, he looks crazy. But his last fight, he actually looked really good. Um, he got it done against... Ah, oh, sheesh. What was that guy's name? Let me take a look at that uh, guy's name. Because I, I remember he, got a, he knocked him out in the first round. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't... And... I believe that Sabatini was like a, a high prospect. Like everybody thought that he was going to win and uh, Damon Jackson got it done. But anyways, you know, mm-hmm. that card's coming up. It's not the most attractive. Like I really like Dan Ige. I'll definitely be watching it. Caitlin Vieira? But, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, versus Pennington. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah and you got your boy. boy. You <laughs> <laughs> You got your bar, Umar. He's finally got a fight. Somebody finally signed up to fight him. Anytime you see a Nurmagomedov on there. Oh, what do you guys think about Habib? He's not going to be coaching anymore. He might possibly not be uh, coaching. What's his name? Islam. Islam. I mean, I don't know what to really think about it, but I think it's, I think it's kind of weird because he's lived his whole life and like not participate in any aspects. Cap. Well, one thing we know about Habib is if he makes up his mind, he makes up his mind. You know, I guess yeah, for me, true. I would be more interested not in like the coaching, but I mean, he has his own MMA organization. So what happens with Eagle Fight? Yeah, I'm really interested to see um, what's going to happen with Habib. Well, uh, CJ, you were saying let him go. You don't care. That's how you feel? I ain't never been a fan of him, so I don't care. Oh. <laughs> Are you trying to do you Dwight trying to do Habib like that? All of those dudes can go. I don't care. Oh, so you're not a part of the, you know, the the Russian nation that is taking over the um, UFC? I'm definitely not a Namagam at all. They can go. You got oh. the you got the beer coming in like them though. Well, I might as well have all of <laughs> they might might fuck around and call you Nermago Medov. They ain't got no mustaches. <laughs> True. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. You know, the Nermago Medovs have been taking over the all 
all Bellator. Yeah, yeah, just they've just been taking over everything. Um, so I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure he's gonna win. That's pretty just much. They're just winners. They're just absolute winners. Um, but then you know, so looking ahead to 2023. What are some of the fights that you guys are like absolutely excited to see? Like your top two, three matchups that you want to see? I need to see Connor back. That's what I need to see back. <laughs> now who now who he fights? I don't know. They're talking about Michael Chandler. Scott, I feel like he, we almost made I feel like it. He was, we almost I feel like he was, made it. Nah, we need to what? see him against my boy. Hey, get my boy paid. We almost Ooh. made it a whole pile without his name being mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who? Oh, who are you talking about? Connor. Connor. He hates Connor. Connor. You hate Connor? Nah. You hate Connor. Your heart. Nah, you don't hate <laughs> Connor. You going you gonna yeah, tune into a Connor fight? How I you watch? All you can't hate. Fights. I know, but you, but that's one that you not gonna miss. I've never fucked with Connor since he's been in the thing. It is what it is. Just, I just don't fuck with certain people, bro. I don't fuck with him. So but what about him, him. what about his fighting? I'm not impressed by that shit, bro. Mm. I'm not so impressed by it at all. You you're not impressed by Connor's fighting, not his striking, nothing. Oh, bro, not at all. Not at so, all. That is just being outright disrespectful. Yeah. Hot <laughs> take. Hot take. <laughs> Anybody can come from an idiot, whatever. So, but look, I give him credit. I literally just went back and watched Connor Diaz too, and he won, but he, it looked like you know, he wasn't super impressive. At all. I'm just not a fan. I mean, <laughs> you think about the Connor that just fucking starched. You know, Jose Aldo, that pieced up Eddie Alvarez. Like, his performance against Eddie Alvarez was literally one of the best uh, in-ring performances I've ever seen, especially with everything on the line. First time UFC was in New York City. First time in Madison Square Garden. He beat the brakes off of Eddie Alvarez. Well, when he fucked up Dustin Poirier, like, he beat the shit out of Dustin Poirier. The first time, He's obviously, not the last two times. Broke his leg. <laughs> I mean, you can't help it sometimes, you know. I'm just not a fan of the nigga. Y'all not gonna change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't saying be a fan of the dude, but I mean, you gotta respect like the skill. I, I respect, I respect all fighters from the top to the bottom, but it is what it is. I don't see the hype. Niggas love that nigga's mouth pause, but I don't fuck with him. <laughs> well, yeah. I, that's one of the fighters that I'm excited to see back in 2023, and I hope it's sooner than later. I hope we don't have to see him out until like July and August because he nigga is pumped up on the juice. Hey, and, that, and that's see. another thing. He's gonna come back juice the fuck up, like <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> yeah, allegedly. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I what say, about so what from? About, yeah, go. So I'll say for me, um, I really don't even want to speak it into existence. But if I could close my eyes and pick a fight, it is going to be the immovable force against the irresistible object. I want to see John Jones on one side. I want to see Francis and Ganu on the other side. And I want to sit back, relax, have uh, some of Grandpa's old cough medicine, and enjoy. <laughs> The explosion that that would be. How do you all see that fight that. planning out if it happens? Sheesh, I don't know. That's a hard one because we ain't even seen John Jones fight a heavyweight. That's, Logic. that's MMA math. That's MMA math. Everybody can say shit, but like I always say, it's some other fucking fight. We could be like, oh, John's gonna start taking him down. He's gonna move, but Nagano's gonna hit him one time and just knock him out. It has to happen oh, to see man. what's gonna happen. Like. Plain and simple. Yeah. Motherfuckers yeah. be talking like they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that, and the total opposite happens. So we never know in fighting. That's facts. That that reminds me of Curtis Blaze when he tried to shoot on Derek Lewis and hey. bing, back of his head touched the back of his back. 
at the top of his back. That man was asleep. Oh my God. Derek had bad. been planning that uppercut forever. <laughs> like Derek was bruh, not playing him. That's why I'm saying like this heavyweight division, like I, we haven't seen John Jones there. Like, yeah, he's the GOAT, but psh, maybe he's the GOAT of the one, you know, the 205ers. John Jones is not the GOAT. That's Who's another hot topic. The GOAT? I mean, this might be before your time, but uh, Fedor Amevinenko is the GOAT of GOATs. He's the king of kings. Fighting Fuck February him. 4th. He's still fighting. Yeah, he's fighting. That's yeah, nuts. He's fighting for that. Ryan for Bader. the championship, mm-hmm. Ryan the Bader. Bader fight. I felt like he, I felt like he just lost his last fight though, Fedor, to somebody. Am I getting that wrong? I think he won. Yeah, he, I think he did. Right. He kind of called his last fight. Like, he, how old is dude? Like forty two, something right now. <laughs> yeah, he's like I think 44, 43 right now. I'm not one hundred percent sure, but if you think about what he did in Pride. And on top of it, what he did as a heavyweight, because, you know, we always as fight fans give more praise to the heavyweights because, you know, if you get Bad touched man. just that little bit, you know what I mean? And just to think, like, if you line up who he's went through and this is what pride rules, hashtag soccer kicks um, and still was that dude. So he's sitting at 40 wins with only six losses. Sheesh. That's- Coming off a two fight win streak. A lot of those losses came later. Yeah. Every one of them came later. He did pretty much his entire career. Yeah, but I mean, you're talking about a juice man, though. I was going to say, is that no. dude sauced up or? No. I mean, his body didn't look like it. He's always looked the same. <laughs> looked like an everyday dude you see in the bar on a Thursday night. But yeah. he's not being tested. What if his everyday body that you see is a juice body? And outside of that, <laughs> he looks completely different. How will we know? I would say that um, he should get his funds back on his juice then. Because <laughs> I, if I'm on the juice, I want to look like Alistair Overeem. Fucking just Right. Muscle right. <laughs> right. The, skin. the hey. ring look like a goddamn motherfucking superhero. Facts. Horse meat. Really? That man horse said it was horse meat. <laughs> what is wrong with him? <laughs> hey, if that's and, what it takes, shit. I go eat hey, Mr. Horse meat burger like a motherfucker, though. <laughs> it sounds delicious. <laughs> you see a lot of dead horses. Right. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Uh, what about you, CJ? What fight are you or what fights are you looking forward to in 2023? Uh, I just I want to see Max come back and get a fight. Um, of course, I want to see Valentina fight. I want to see Amanda fight. Uh, maybe Charles catches somebody else and catch a fight. Uh, see if Rosa can catch somebody else and get a fight. Um, it's just a lot, you know? I want to see the women's cars start moving around a little bit more. Hopefully 205 get their shit together. Please. That used to be my favorite division back in the day, and it's kind of it's weird right now. Everybody gets hurt or cancels. I don't know. It's but like, hard to lose straight, the women's division. Straight, straight matchups. I don't. It's like that's for them. I don't give a fuck. Like just mm-hmm. give us some good fights. Oh, I do want to see Benel fight somebody. That's my guy, Benny the Butcher. I, I would say off top, and just because the picture's right here. Vera versus Stan Hagen. Sign me up. Take my money. I cannot wait to see the violence that's going to take place between them. I'm leaning towards Cheeto. Um, I just really like Cheeto. And I wasn't necessarily that impressed by Stan Hagen's last performance against Song Yandong. Shit, that's next month. Ooh, yes. I know. <laughs> like, like, and if you look at the date, like, it's already January 10th. Like, we just started the year off and it's already half, almost halfway through. Like, these fights are going to start coming. Like, February 11th is a month away. We're going to see Islam versus Volkanovsky. Like, that's... That's crazy. Like, it's that's literally... Fast. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's... It's it's going to be a nice first quarter worth of fights, especially if they do the March 4th card and if they are able to get... Um, I don't see Jones versus uh, 
and got no happening on that card, you know. And Cejudo versus Aljo is not a compelling enough uh, that that fight's not something that like can sell a pay per view. And then on top of that, I guess Aljo put out a video today talking about he has a torn bicep and he doesn't know whether or not he'll be fighting March fourth and uh two months away from now. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. telling y'all again, I am this close to to call an upset special for Volkanovski. I'm this close. I'm an Asian man away, let me tell you. That'd be nice. That'd y'all, be absolutely okay. who y'all who do y'all think so <laughs> in that fight? <laughs> I think Islam. I think Islam is is. I think Islam all day. I'm not gonna tell you who I think is gonna win. I'm gonna tell you who the fuck I'm going for. I'm going for Volkanovski. Nah. Don't don't, don't get know, invested. Like I said, I don't know. He's gonna grapple him. Volk gonna knock him out. Somebody's gonna get subbed. I don't know who the fuck knows. But I'm going for Volkanovski. This close to calling an upset special. Betters, get ready. Get ready. Nah, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way. There's see, always see, a way. That's the thing. I, there's always a way. I see. I see Islam just taking him down, just holding him there. I don't, I, I yeah. don't think Volk is going to be able to get up. Yeah, everybody keeps saying like, "Oh, he's super short. He has short legs," and blah blah blah. blah. And like I said on that live on TikTok, like, how hard is it for you to hold down a toddler? <laughs> They're really short <laughs> to the fucking ground. They get kind of slippery here and there. Man, you better wait until Islam put them hips into him and grab him. Come on, pause. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to be different. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just remind uh, the audience that uh, y'all said that Kevin Holland could stand with my boy Stephen Thompson. How did that work no, out? No, no, I did not say that. And I can go back and pull it up. I said he would be foolish to stand and bang with him. He needs to clinch and close the gap. I said that if he stood with Wonder Boy, he was going to get pieced up. And that's exactly what happened. Well, it started to go downhill once his hand broke. So I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah, but... but both had broken hands. But when they had that grappling exchange in the first round, and then Kevin was like, oh, no, no grappling today. Come on, bro. (laughs) Come on, this is MMA. You can't be out there like that. Nah, yeah, I think what's his name? Come shot took his soul. <laughs> he don't want nothing to do with that, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, there's quite a few fights um, that I would like to see. You know, obviously, like CJ said, you know, I'd like to see a max fight. I don't know what's gonna happen with that, just because like I don't think he should be match. I don't think he should be matched inside the 155 division, just because. Or inside 145 because, yeah, 145 because, like, if he goes, like, everybody wants him to fight Arnold on the um, the London card. But if he fights in that London card and say if he beats Arnold Allen, then, like, that knocks off a competitor, a number one um, title contention shot for Arnold. You know, and, like, him I, personally, especially as a biased Max Holloway fan, like, I don't see anybody in 145 beating him aside from Volkanovski. Um, but then at the same time, like, I just don't know if uh, 155 is scary for like, unless he's actively right now has been bulking up in order to go to 155. Like it's just going to be scary for him there with like somebody like Justin Gaethje popping them on the chin. Like, and Justin has been wanting to fight Max for a while. Cause that's one of his favorite fighters, but I don't know about that. Uh, I can't see my boy. I'm gonna tell you right now. If Max ever gets slept like Tony Ferguson, I'm not watching MMA for like two, three months. I can't do it. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see him. I'm going to tell you right now. Like, whatever (laughs) happens after that, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to be on this podcast. (laughs) Y'all can talk amongst yourself, but I won't be able to. (laughs) Yeah. I don't see see him again. That's the thing with Max. He gets hit a lot. And going up to 55, those those guys got hella pop. The 155ers got heat behind their... That shit is crazy, honestly. Because, like, 155, you think they kind of little. Like, that's kind of a, a light weight. Like, if I was walking around 155, I'd look like I'm damn near homeless. But, bruh, them them 155ers are actually scary. Like, I swear, if you see one walking down the street, you ain't trying to fuck with him. Even if he's a smaller looking dude. <laughs> Guarantee you, they'll fuck you up. Do you have well, any I mean, fights coming up this year? Cut weights. 
Uh, I don't have anything lined up yet, but working. I'm still training, still working, so gotcha. being prepped. I think that um, Max Holloway is in a really shitty position now um, because it's like, okay, where does his career go from here? Um, even if he bulks up, the problem with Max at 155, which you already saw when he fought Destin, is he can't hurt them with any power shots. Like, he's not going but, to power shot anybody. And pause. He took that fight on a six weeks notice so he didn't have time to properly bulk up all he did was just not cut the extra 10 pounds it was late Agreed. notice and then two to three months after that he fought frankie edgar he cut right back down but to 145 pause, so we, right even at mm -hmm. 145 max is not a one hitter quitter knock you out guy he's an accumulation he's not kind but of guy. he is the he's not number one away. he is the number one for tko and ko in hit ufc history at featherweight. But, at featherweight. But those are accumulations. Those are not, I'm sending you to fucking Narnia. Yeah. He doesn't throw, True. he doesn't sit on his punches. That's not his game yeah. plan. Agreed. Yeah, that's so a, I'm that's saying. The thing you say that because I was watching him fight Ortega. And, you know, Ortega was getting some little good licks here and there. Um, but I was telling Mo, I was like, it's beautiful because he sh throws his punches short. So they don't come back to his face. He's throwing them here. And then the other one's coming right behind it. He doesn't come all the way back. So um, Ortega was throwing his looping punches and everything was coming right down the middle to him. So he, he he's not throwing a lot with a lot of power coming behind it. Yeah. But it was beautiful in that, in that fight. <laughs> Can we all just take a second and pause and think about that uh, the face or the face of Ortega after he fought Max Holloway. Oh my God. Yeah, talk yeah. about somebody getting beat the fuck up. That was a real it, it's, beat. It's crazy because we were watching the first round, it was decent, and then at the end of the second round, I was like, God damn, what the fuck? And his shit was all busted open. And it happened, it happened like, like that, like super fast. Yeah. Bro, it, literally boxed that man's face off. It was crazy. Brian Ortega <laughs> can't yeah, catch a break. Baby. Brian cannot catch a break. Like, who I, can he be? It's going to be hard for him to, uh, to move around coming back to 45. Yeah. There's some top guys coming around. I think that's going to fuck him up. <laughs> so. That's another thing. Like, 145 is so... It's hard when you have, you know, a reigning champ up there like Volkanovski, who's so dominant. Like, there's nobody at 145 that I'm thinking, oh, man, this might be the person that can get Volk out of there. Um... And yep. like you do have people that are coming up, but the people that are at the top, like uh, I, I don't know, it's just it's it's just tough at the top. What about what about middleweight? What are we doing with this division now? Oh, Alex's division. Mm -hmm. The floodgates have opened. Hey, uh, Alex is, is, Ferrer better is, is hope he? that he. Alex better say, hope is, is that uh, he don't got to get Whitaker. I, I'm excited to see that. I feel like uh, Izzy's going to be the gatekeeper now, and then Whitaker's going to be underneath. So you think Izzy loses again to Alex? I mean, it happened three times in a row. Numbers don't lie. I mean, psh. he he got that hit off at the buzzer. He should have sealed the deal with that one, <laughs> but he couldn't do it, and it cost him. And I feel like it's the same shit. I feel like Izzy has knockout power, not against Alex Pereira. Mm. There is levels to this. Bruh. Yeah, I think Izzy, um, it's like my mind tells me that like Izzy, because Izzy was winning that fight, that he has the potential to come back and be able to beat Pereira because um, he was winning. But like there's always that question mark you know there's always that question of like is he gonna land something that's gonna put him out um and now that izzy will be the challenger coming in because you know his whole thing was like a hey, when challengers come inside here they need to actually fight me like now that izzy will be the challenger does he change his game plan like is he being more aggressive than he typically would because now you can't lead the dance you know what i mean you're not the matador you know you're the bull coming in there to take the title off so that'll be interesting to see um yeah middleweight is just if if alex is a champion middleweight is wide open like there's fresh fights to happen izzy wins again um 
then I mean he's he's ran through the division. There's really nobody that. On uh, a on a real quick side note that you got this up, um, I would love to see Zhang Li piece the fuck up Shevchenko. That'd be a great fight to watch. And she says she wants to move up to fight her anyway. Why? Because she won't get knocked out by Rose? Stop it. (laughs) Did she not get knocked out by Rose? I missed the fight. I don't know. (laughs) Don't make me put that picture of you up. Dimitri, don't make me put that. I love Rose, but I don't think that's how that fight's going to go again. Like, the way she's ascending, and then Rose Star is coming down right now. And I love Rose. But it just you can look in her eyes and it seems something is lost right now, you know? Yeah, I agree. And then she just lost her little grappling tournament too. Fast. Hey, Shardy got on top of her and just that was so fast. The way that she fast. choked her out. I was like, wait a minute, we just started. Like <laughs> Oh, you yeah. was there, right, Scott? No, no, no. I wasn't there for that one. That one was Fury. Oh, I was there okay. for uh, the invitational with uh Gordon and Ryan. King of Kings. Yeah, um, he's actually really a douchebag. Like he's I've been paying attention. Douchebag. I've been paying attention to his social media and like I'm not Sus. a fan. And a little bit racist. Gordon oh. Ryan. Uh Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Is he? And a little bit. Out. Just an Asian man. Hey, if you're hey, if you're a little bit, you a lot of it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, Wei Lee versus Shevchenko. <laughs> Who would you lean towards, CJ? I know you like both of them. I like both of them. Valentina. Wei Lee is just a little bit too small. But like I always say, man, you never fucking know. You just don't never know. But personally, I think uh, Valentina will grab her up a little bit, put her in that crucifix. But oh, it'll be a good scrap. Yeah. I think Valentina has better footwork. She's strong as fuck, too. She she may not look like it, but she's strong as hell. No, she looked like it. <laughs> she looked strong as hell. I think I think they'd have to fight twice, and because I think the first time Valentina will win, and I think Wei Li would have to go back to the game plan and then like come back and fight her like a different time. I think the first match like Valentina might just be too much. Um, for her, just like to figure out what's really happening. I think like if they were to fight a second time, then Wei Lee, I would lean towards Wei Lee. Um mm. Well, call me a contrarian. Uh I got Wei Lee by TKO. Dang. Yeah, I think that uh, Valentina's confidence, even though she's not outwardly expressing it internally, it shook because she knows that Santos beat her the last fight. She's gotta know it. She's got to fucking know it because Shevchenko lost that fight. That's what the world's saying. Not CJ. Me. <laughs> no, I mean, y'all can have your opinion. Like, I'm going to have mine and the judges shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> Kidney punch. <laughs> <laughs> so now, but like I said, I, I watched the fight, what, two weeks ago we watched that shit? What, and I, I, like I said, I'm an unbiased like a motherfucker, bro. So when you first watch the, the when you think about that fight and you watch in your mind, you think like, damn, Santos controlled her the whole the whole first round. And you look at it, it was only a minute and 40 seconds and she didn't do nothing. She had her back in this sub attempt while Valentina was striking her ass up. I give her the second round. She, she got that takedown and controlled the whole round. Third round, it was at the end of the round. It was a minute and 20 seconds where she had a little bit of control. With nothing, and Valentina was piecing her up the whole round before that. The third round, there was body kicks, head kicks. Uh, no, the third round, um, Santos couldn't touch her. She wasn't striking with her at all. She got a little bit of control here and there, boom, and then the headbutt happened, and then it was a wash. It was closer yeah, than everybody's headbutt. used to seeing her, so everybody's eyes are like, "Oh shit, what's going on? What's going on?" But me going back and rewatching it with an unbiased eyes it was it wasn't it was four to one of me that's crazy you sound like me about josh emmett versus calvin cater because i thought i thought josh won um everybody else felt like calvin cater won and i thought that josh won four to one i know everybody was like that's insane so it's stop, crazy stop. How did you, you give you give santos round one 
I gave Santos one through three. Sorry, go look at round one again. She had a minute and 40 seconds of control with nothing happening. It, she was going for a sub attempt. And she didn't get nothing, though, while Valentina was popping her ass up on her back. Do those strikes don't count at all? Sure, they count, but you still have to. Yeah, sure. it, it does. And that's another thing. Like, the judges have to start getting consistent. So, so let's see. What counts more, failed sub attempts or strikes? Technically, damage. And then outside of damage is control time. So controlling, which would be the going for the submissions, having your back, so, being inside so, of a dominant so position. Yeah. So she had her down for a minute and 40. So that means there was three minutes and 20 seconds that Valentina was winning the first round. I didn't necessarily think that she was doing nothing in the first round on the feet. Go back and look. Them body kicks was fucking her ass up. Her hands were touching her. Go back and watch. I'm telling you, I watched with an unbiased mind. So Talia got the takedown on the second round where she initiated the takedown. She got the trip. She clinched up and tripped it and got her down. But we can move on. We can move on. Because we, like, that shit was in June last year. Like, what the fuck? (laughs) But that's another thing that I'm upset about, right? So they booked Talia Santos versus Aaron Blanchfield for um, a fight. And it's like, I feel like they should have ran it back with Shevchenko. Because now, like, what are y'all going to do? Try to give us uh, Mignon Faro for, uh, like, nobody wants to see that. Like, we wanted to see Talia Santos versus Shevchenko again. Like, why is Taya Santos number two having a fight number 10? <laughs> That's ridiculous. But we've seen it before. Sean O'Malley. Pure O'Malley. Young, and look what happened. O'Malley. Now he's the number one guy. <laughs> that shit is crazy. They probably, they probably did that, Sky, because how Blanfield beat a um, meatball. She didn't beat her. She walked her like a dog. <laughs> and then brushed her shoulders off. It was the shoulder <laughs> brush for me. Yeah. But uh, real fast, you know, I, I, I want to say this. Um, as much as us as MMA fans can be extremely critical of judges. And like, here we are, you know, where me and Sky watched the fight. It was like, it's clear as day. And then CJ watched the same exact fight and said it's clear as day. So maybe we are being too harsh on the judges. Absolutely I wouldn't say not. it's clear as day. It's one of those fights that it's hard to say. A lot of shit be hard to say. So when a lot of people say, hey, it's a robbery, it's like, no, it's closer than you fucking think it is. <laughs> like, Patty, that motherfucker robbed the bank. That He lost that fucking yeah. But when he it's super fight. close, it's like, hey, man, it's a hard job. I- Patty's lucky he wasn't slept in that fight. But the thing that's crazy, though, is that that fucking referee, he was at Bellator the night before, and he messed up that card. Remember, Scott? Yeah, the Stocks the versus fight. Sabatello. He yeah. had and Sabatello. That mm-hmm. So that fool was in... Where were they at? In Denver or wherever the hell they Connecticut. were Connecticut. And then he, he flies all the way to Vegas to go mess that fight up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like yeah. they should do a thing where you're like, yo, you can't rest back to back nights or something like that. Like, come on, bro. I think that uh, I know like some commissions do like calibration calls where like they'll get on and like watch old fights and like everybody will score it and then like say like why they scored or they'll review fights and then put like okay why did you score it that way i think that needs to be done more often they need to be calibrating so that everybody's on the same page because certain things like that just don't make sense like the same way that people feel about like having control and not doing anything with it like i always bring up the francis and ganu versus gon fight because i feel like everybody was just like so amazed that francis and ganu was wrestling that they didn't realize that he had control for i want to say eight and a half almost 10 minutes something like that i pull it up on the stats but he had hella control time and threw seven strikes zero submission attempts and only landed three of those of those strikes while he was on the ground he literally did nothing nothing and all while they're on the ground to your point about valentina uh gone had more strikes on the ground he was hitting them and he had several submission attempts but people still look at that fight and say oh my god and ganu won blah 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 and it's like 
if we're what are we judging like one on one way we're like so impressed and ganu is wrestling and y'all haven't seen it but he didn't do shit with it yeah i think that's the thing that's weird because sometimes some fights some fights you'll watch a fight and a guy will wrestle up or not really do anything um and then the next fight uh something similar in that fight and then they'll end up losing so it's you're like how do you score this kind of stuff so like you said uh Back in the day, somebody who was just on top, absolutely doing nothing, but the guys on the bottom throwing elbows, hitting them with pot shots, looking vicious, they'll end up losing just because the guy was on top, doing nothing, mm -hmm. pretty much just holding position. But you're like, bro, you're not, you're not moving anywhere, right? But let's be honest. Usually, when you're on bottom, you're not doing much. <laughs> no, I, I see some people get vicious from the bottom. <laughs> he he's but, being a. But also to that point, that's why you have to. That's, that's why you have to question <laughs> the referee. Because if the referee is just letting it happen, then it is what it is. It's, he's just going to see that control time rack up. And even even because we all see that he's not doing that, and the referee should stand it up. But some referees just be like, "Go ahead, like you got to work, yeah, you got to work, I, I, give I, I, them I, 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 give I, 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 them too like long." A little, a little bit more, a little bit more rest stand ups. And I hate to be like, oh, you can get to a sub or you can get to a ground and pound. But if you can see when a dude is clearly just just holding yeah. it. Me and my girl is like, yo, start throwing up subs. Start throwing some ground and pounds. If that's not happening, man, stand him up. Okay, so unpopular opinion. If a grown-ass man can lay on top of you for 15 to 25 minutes and you can't do shit about it, that's on you. right? If you want them to stand him up, there's something called kickboxing. There's something called boxing, right? Work on your ground game. I know it's not the greatest shit to watch, but I'm a huge opinion, just like Joe Rogan. If a man can hold you down for 15 straight minutes and you can't do nothing about it, that's on you, motherfucker. Step your game up, son. I, I, I understand that too, but like get down there and get violent though. Throw elbows, throw shots, throw subs up. Ain't no problem. Ain't no problem with on the ground game. There's no fucking problem with that. Get down there. Throw them fucking elbows. Throw those punches. Get into the mount. Get into a mount. Get into a half guard. Start throwing those elbows. Throw those knees to the body. Make the judges see that shit and be like, oh, he was fucking active down there. He was right. doing some shit down there. I here's see why you got down there and you were biting. And here's what I will say. If you have a situation where somebody like Mark Madsen, I can't stand Mark Matson. I don't know if you guys know him. The little I, I don't remember what country he's from, but he's like a Olympic wrestler. USA. No, he's not. He's from like Sweden Denmark. or something. Denmark. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Denmark. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like his style, like he literally is one of those people that lay and pray with no um no offense at all. And so for people like that, it's like, okay, I'm saying don't stand him up, but as a judge. Do exactly like that Stotts versus Sabatello fight, right? Like if somebody is just literally being a wet blanket and they've thrown no strikes at the bottom and the person that's on top of them is throwing strikes, they're winning the fight, in my opinion, because you're not trying to do any damage. You're not trying to advance a position, but I'm not going to stand you up. I'm just going to sit there and let you lose the fight on your own. That's what happened to Sabatello was that he literally did nothing. Like you seen, like, on, I think it might've been like the fourth round. Like he literally was just holding Stotts and like in side control, like we're just sitting there like doing zero punches for like four minutes. Like, no. And that's why he lost the fight. He was all upset. He's all like, he felt like he won. I'm like, with what? You literally did nothing. I think Stotts put out like three times his output as far as striking and damage. Like, so yeah, like if you're down on the bottom and you just want to hold somebody, you're just going to hold on to a L. <laughs> 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 like that's how the judging should be <laughs> well that's what they have to go back and reevaluate and be like okay you got it you got him down here do some work down here there's no yeah. like i said there's no problem if you holding them down 30 40 seconds you taking them down there but you i, I also like seeing people transition in, in and out of things but mm -hmm. that's just that's just me that makes exciting fights it's like i don't mind grappling this shit like the Gamrod and uh, Benny the Butcher fight. Them motherfuckers was all over the damn ring. Transitioning, mm -hmm. moving. I like that kind of shit. Yeah, but the scrambles. Hold, but the fans, the fans don't want to see that shit. The fans don't want to see that shit. You know I who had a good... 
You know who had a good grappling exchange? I think it was the second round or maybe it was the first round of Irene Aldana versus Macy Chiaz. How you say Chiaz. that last name? Yes. Do y'all remember that? They were like on the ground, like rolling. Oh. They were going from yeah. different transitions to different. It was amazing. Like I, I was there for that fight. That was um the same fight with Tony Ferguson versus um That's the Nate one Diaz. Kicked her in the ribs. Yeah, kicked her in the liver. Oh yeah, with up kick. Yeah, but yeah. prior to that up kick, they had like a really good um right. roll, just like on the gra- yeah grappling exchange where they were just um absolutely going for it, and that was a really good time. So it's like stuff like that, absolutely we appreciate. But the wet blanket, I I don't want to see it at all. I don't want to see it at all. But I understand that like, hey, if if you can't get somebody off of you, can't get them off of you. But at the same time, as a judge, I'm not giving you nothing. I'm not giving you nothing. You didn't have no offense. Let me ask everyone this real fast. (laughs) Oh, let me ask everyone this real fast. uh, Since we're talking about judging, Uh, open scoring, yes or no? Simple. Yes. Damn, fuck. It's a toss up for me. Like, uh, fuck. I feel like there's pros and cons to it. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it's that cutting uh, black and white, you know? It's pros and cons. So it's it's good for the guy who's down. But for the other guy who's up, he's like, hey, man, I'm up too. I'm about to just run away in the third round. But you also kind of feel it in the fight when you're up two rounds. Yeah. But like you said, look, look, look at Izzy. Look at Leon. Them, them motherfuckers felt that they was up. And look what happened. So, yeah. Uh, I mean... <laughs> I, uh, I'm sorry, whole... gentlemen. I apologize. It was uh, a yes or no question. <laughs> <laughs> it's more nuanced to that shit, though. That's what I'm saying. It's more nuanced. I feel it. I feel it. There are pros and cons, right? But it, it leads so to. What you think? <laughs> I, I would like to see it at least, at least attempt it. I would like to see like what. There you go, Damien. There you go. Try some shit, and if it don't work. Move the fuck on. Go back to the old shit. Ain't never nothing wrong with trying something. Try it. Like, try it for a month. If there's four fights in in a month, try it for that month. And if it's whack, move the fuck on. Try new <laughs> stuff for a month. Hold on, I'm gonna ask my girl about anal real fast. Be right back. <laughs> you wild, <man. laughs> what What is your answer? Yes or no? A hundred percent yes. Uh, kind of. Yeah. I'm gonna. Ride my man Damien Coattails. Let's just see it. I think, um, is it PFL that's going to start? Because I think it is the state of Colorado that just passed um, an ordinance for them to be open scoring if they prefer. I know Invicta does it now. There's some commission that just passed uh, open scoring. I can't think of it off the tip of my tongue. I humbly apologize. But yeah, um, they do it in Invicta, which is in Kansas. So... And they've been doing it. I know, like, after Max had lost his second fight to Volkanovski, he went out there and watched the fight, and they uh, were doing open scoring, and they're still currently doing it. Um, but, yeah, and I, in Colorado, you can as well. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I I like it because at the end of the day, like, even if you are up 2-0, that person knows that they're down. They know they have to come out there and get it done. Like Ponzanibio versus Alex Morano. Like, <laughs> hey, he knew. Hey, his coach was like, "You're down. You got to get it done." Hey, that boy went out there and got it done. Alex knew he was up, but guess what? Now there's this wild banshee coming at you, trying to take you out. Like, good luck. Good luck trying to survive. That was a scary <laughs> knockout. His it whole was. face just froze. I was like, "Oh, damn! What happened to this guy?" That was scary Speak- as hell. Speaking of a scary knockout, if you guys watch boxing, Tank Davis versus Hector Garcia. When Hector Garcia said that, like, he got hit and he couldn't see, I was like, stop interviewing him right now. Get him to the doctors. Like, stop talking to us. He's talking about he didn't know where he was and he barely got hit, like, in the temple. No, like, stop talking to that man. That was scary to me. I was like, nah, because you you seen how many people in boxing have been there, like, they're okay for that moment, and then, like, they go and they got bleeding in the brain and all kind of stuff. Like, yeah. no need to do an interview. Yeah, nah, not after something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Did y'all watch that fight? I watched the highlights. Oh, <laughs> oh, you were in California, so the weather is out there looking crazy, huh? 
Yeah, Somebody ran into an electrical box and they oh, messed up okay. the whole power. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah right when I was about to sit down and watch it, the whole shit just went off. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Listen, uh, everyone, I don't want to hear any of y'all talk about terrible weather. There's only one person here that lives in Minnesota. That <laughs> <laughs> hey, life is in the Non-stop snowing on there, or what? Yeah, no, I got about, snow. probably about uh, two feet on the ground. Yeah, uh, well, shit, you should be used to that shit. I right? out here in LA, it's sunshine all the time, and like the past two weeks, we ain't got no sunshine. <laughs> it's just been raining and flooding and mudslides, and bro, it's nuts right now. It's crazy, but I feel like it's good. It needs it. It like cleanses the earth. It's a little, it's a little new year, new me for for Los Angeles. <laughs> it's doing a little cleanse right now. Facts, facts. But we are going to go ahead and wrap this up for the day. Uh, we'll be back next week, uh, which we'll be getting ready for UFC 283. Um, mm. And we'll actually mm. go more in depth into that card because, you know, I, I'm Brandon Moreno all day and Jace is more figgy. But that it is what it is, you know. Mm. Um, yeah. And I, I'm excited for that card. There's some there's some killers on that card. Um but yeah, we will be back next week. We'll start to do uh, some plans that we have coming into the new year. We'll start doing fight reviews, going over older fights, uh, going over controversial decisions and just seeing like getting our takes over it. Um, yeah, there'll be a lot of different things that'll be coming on the channel rather than just like the normal podcast that'll be popping up. Follow me on TikTok. MMA casual 619. I ain't really a casual though. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Hey, the undefeated, undisputed King of Kings is still here. Get your betting picks ready. Kel, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> undefeated, <laughs> undisputed, and that man that lost. Uh, and Kate Pink a pick to save his life. Anyways, we are out. Peace.